and John and Stacy can benefit from Ahmed and Muhammad and Abdullah. You know, they're Muslim neighbors who are, you know, a good family, a good Muslim family. And that can bring numerous benefits. But this goes both ways. Right? It goes both ways, no doubt. Yeah. So even Bob and Tracy can benefit the Ummah if they abide by Allah's laws. No. And they can harm the whole of humanity, humanity if, if they, they do don't. Not. And the Muslim family, likewise, if they don't abide by the Quran, we become monstrous. No. We become the worst ever to live on earth because we have nothing to hold us back. No. This is the beauty of Islam once implemented. Sheikh Salam, in a previous episode, we talked about the husband and the wife. I mean, this is the first, you know, base of the family, right? And right now you said that, you know, we gave the example of Bob and Stacy, right? If they themselves do not abide by the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope they don't sue us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Stacy are not trade names, inshallah. Okay. <laughs> but in Islam, the issue of nasab is very important, lineage, right? And this seems what one of the keys of our Muslim family, or not just the family, the family at large, is this issue of people not respecting lineage. And it happens at the husband and wife, or partner, let's say, a level, right? How does that impact the family and the Muslim family at large, any people not respecting these boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has raised? Because in the end of the day, the family starts with the husband and the wife. Jazakallah <laughs> I'll come back to this point. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the topic is so vast. It's very vast, actually. Yeah. And we are talking about the Muslim family. Okay. And we need that Muslim family. We need the Muslim family that has the rida, the contentment. Okay. That they are content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them. The Muslim family that they are role model. Okay. So that non-Muslim neighbors this Muslim family, wow. wow. Okay, we want to be like them. See, they are so mannered. The children, so disciplined. Okay? The Islam, really, in many places of the world, only traders, merchants went there. But when the people saw the character, the Islamic character, they became Muslims. Uh -huh. So in Islam, then when the Prophet Sallallahu is saying, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min, man bata wa jaruhu ja'i'un, wa huwa ya'lam. Subhanallah. He's not a believer, he's not a believer, he's not a believer. Whoever sleeps while knowing his neighbor is, hungry. is hungry. This is our Islam. The Sorry Prophet, to cut you, but how would he know that he's hungry? He should... See, you know, the person... Okay, his income, okay, you know, he hardly, what he gets hmm. can provide him three meals a day. Or maybe he reaches, hmm. he knew about it from different means. I would say that also, it requires some effort from our you should ask. side to ask, you to go ask. and know that, about them. Exactly, that's Allah. part, part of the right of the neighbor. Allah. When the Prophet Sallallahu wives would make a, a prof soup. Allah. We say increase the, water increase the water so that we can give it to as many neighbors as oh, Akbar. Abdullah ibn Umar in Adab al Mufrad. This is the beauty of Islam. We want to share it with you. Mm. We have a lot of things in Islam we can give and share. His neighbor was a Jew and they slaughtered a goat. He said, Never forget my neighbor. Give him part of that. The Prophet in one of his hadith, he said, If you bring gifts for your children, you bring gifts for the children of your neighbor. Allah. Otherwise, don't let your children to come out playing with their toys. Sure. SubhanAllah. This is what we want to share with the people. Mm. So imagine that those brothers and sisters, Muslims, families, whether in the West, wherever they are, they are role models and they are true Muslim families. That is da'wah. Mm. Have you called your neighbors for a meal? Yes, for a meal. Yeah, he's not a Muslim, yes, but he is my neighbor. Mm. The point was about the husband and the wife mm. and not respecting, as Sheikh Asim was saying, you know, that even non-Muslims should abide by the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we identified this as one of the reasons for the decay of the Muslim family is that the relationship between man and woman 
and not respecting the boundaries of Allah, this influences the family, yani, right? Because you see, when as Muslims, it's not utopian, right? Okay, there will be ups and downs in the marital life, and Prophet Muhammad's life is an example, okay? And we all know the famous story that he left his wives for one month. So it's not idealistic, okay? But there is a reference we refer to it. Mm. Okay? We don't cross that border, which is what Allah said, what the Prophet said. Yeah. So, so the word ideal and is relative, right? We're not talking ideas perfect. And this is something very important that I wanted to bring up, that a lot of people will give up and they'll look for other avenues to improve their family lives because they say, well, you know, Islam is just so you know, idealistic or something, or they say they think that it has to be perfect. And as you said, the Prophet ﷺ had problems with his wife, oh, Tani. You know, and the first problem husband and wife have, they say, ah, you know, this is, I'm done with this, you know, I cannot work with this, it's too hard. See, Akhi, Imam Nasa'i, and this is a beautiful book, Ishrat al-Nisa, how you deal with women. He said one of the Sahaba had a problem with his wife. Mm. And he was fed up. So he, he was looking for help. So he went to Sayyidina Umar. From outside, he heard Umar's wife screaming. Right. So he said, hey, I'm not alone. Huh? <laughs> I'm not alone. This is happening in Umar's house. So he turned back. So he turned back. But then Sayyidina Umar opened the door. Uh, come, brother, come. Uh, nothing, nothing. No, no, come back. And he told him, he said, listen, Akhi. See how Sayyidina Umar reacted. And he started listing her activities. So, huh? He said, she cooks for me. She stitches my clothes. She looks after my children. She cleans the house. Listing. If she flares up from time to time, I have to take it. Life is about give and take. That's such an important that point. Is it very important. We should not be idealistic. She gets angry. Sayyidina Ali, who is better than Fatima? So, huh? yeah. oh. Sayyidat Nisa Ahl al-Jannah. The lady of all the women in the Jannah. And yet, he made Sayyidina Ali angry mm. one day. As the Prophet Sallallahu came Sallam. and said, where is your husband? He said he left. Allah. And he was angry. Allah. He knew where to find him. He went to the masjid. And Sayyidina Ali slept in the masjid and he woke him up and he gave him the kunya Abu Turab. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. We're going to take a little break. Zakullah khair, mashallah. We'll be right back in a few minutes on Peace TV. This is your host, Gabriel Romani. I'm Abdurrahim Green, and I'm wishing all the viewers of Peace TV a blessed Ramadan. agree to disagree or disagree to agree. Dispute superstitions and refute the myth which is created around the word religion, which is misinterpreted, misconstrued and misjudged. Let's wake up from delusion. And step into the world of reality with confidence. Find all the answers to confront or defy. Reject or accept. Dispute or challenge. When caught in. Crossfire. 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 Misconceptions clarified. Falsehood exposed. And truth revealed. Discover the reality with Dr. Zakir Naik in Crossfire. Tonight at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. India on Peace TV.
Islam is easy to follow, easy to follow. Easy to follow. but many of us complicate things due to lack of knowledge. Of knowledge. Of knowledge. To clarify confusions about Islam, join me on Umdat al-Ahkam. Get the remedies of Sunnah and Zahi Hadith to protect ourselves from all kinds of innovations in Umdatul Ahkam, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Peace TV and we are talking about the ideal Muslim family. And just before the break, we were making the point that ideal is a very relative word okay we're not talking about perfect we're talking here about perfection as in the standard that the prophet ﷺ has put and he is and he, the perfect person that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and uh, we saw some examples of the prophet ﷺ himself having issues with his family and his sahaba and so on dr ahmed when we're talking about the family not being perfect right and we said that a lot of people lose hope with Islam and they start looking for help in other places when they have family issues. Why is that not correct or what's the limit? Where should people, you know, I mean, refer back to when it comes to these issues? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala ahlihi wa sahabi wa man ittaba'a huda. Amma ba'd, I would say that where to find in case you get into trouble and you need some advice, where to take the advice? We already touched on that earlier saying that Yes, you need to reach the scholars, the well-learned people, in order to take guidance, not necessarily to uh, think that they are the best example or they don't have problems. As the story already mentioned by uh, our brother, Sheikh Salim, regarding Omar al-Khattab and one of the companions, what we need to do is increase the number of people who can give advices, particularly those who are in this social business of not business in the sense of selling and buying but rather in this area where people can find someone to turn to not every imam would be suitable for this i hope that everyone who's in the masjid is an imam or someone who's in the media to be a good example for people to turn to but that may not be the case however for those who are wise and knowledgeable and have experience and can deal with families Hopefully they would come to the front and they would offer the help that is needed for Muslim families to look after. I think one important thing is for us as families is to have good communication within the family. Unless we have that communication going on, we may at one point or another just everything falls down or breaks down and we will not find any way that we can get things together back again. The important thing is to keep communication, but communication in the right way, not because some people just have this monologue rather than a dialogue. What we need to do is really have a dialogue where they would talk to each other, listen to each other, understand the concerns of one another. Sometimes we don't care, especially men. I'd like to point out to our brothers in particular to be wise enough to listen to their wives, to listen to the women, whether they are daughters, mothers, or aunts, anyone who's a female within the family, because they do have concerns. And just like the example of Umar al-Khattab, where he really was exemplary in that sense, he remembered the good things that his wife was doing for him. And you need to forgive. You need to have this sense of forgiveness and sense of openness and accepting some of the shortcomings because as the Prophet ﷺ said, if you don't like something that she would do, then you'd accept another thing. In fact, many things, there are so many good things about women and particularly women would love to hear something complimentary. They need to hear a good word from their husbands. And the same thing for, we as human beings would like to hear good things so why can't you sweeten your tongue towards your own sweetheart, as Sheikh already gave us the, <laughs> uh, the term? Really, I think it would be nice to see that 
And the children, by the way, would once the parents are doing this nice exchange and good communication, they would imitate Learn. that. They would take example in that. So that's how we need to improve within the family. And once problems arise, either we can solve it ourselves or take someone within the family. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you look for someone within the family. If they would seek to reconcile their own differences, Allah will give them that reconciliation and they would find help in that. Yeah, mashallah. We just have about two minutes left. I want to pose a question to Sheikh Asim. This is a question actually that came to us uh, from some you know, people outside. We get a lot of emails sometimes. People are involved in our community service and so on. But what if the sweetheart is not so sweet, you know, and you have problems? Do you pretend or force yourself as a family to keep a certain image in the community or not? Or do you just let it to be natural and you know, argue and shout and, you know, because it's natural? First of all, this needs more than two minutes, right. unfortunately. <laughs> so maybe we'll continue. After and it is not only the sweetheart. Hmm. It's, it's your spouse. So right. it can be from the man, it can be from the woman. Right. Bringing it back to your initial question that Islam is too perfect hmm. and people tend to give up. Give up, they give up very fast. It is a human nature. It's a characteristic in almost every one of us. We're professionals in putting obstacles in our ways. Uh -huh. So this hinders our progressiveness. We cannot proceed. So what about bringing up your children? Oh, the, it's a corrupt time. There's so much fitna. Right. My children are disobedient. OK, what about connecting to your mom and dad? Oh, they are so arrogant, and they're always nagging and grumpy and not happy. OK, what about trying to fix what's between you and your spouse? And we keep on putting obstacles. Islam is a perfect religion. The imperfection is in us. So if someone tells you, you have a choice. Either accept half the salary you wish for or be jobless. Mm. What will you choose? Mm. Definitely half of the salary. So if you cannot get this perfect life in your house, akhi, as close as possible to perfection. Mm. So now going back to the two minute uh, <laughs> answer, which I don't think it, it fits. Definitely, as they say in the States, fake it. Fake it. If you can't have the real thing, fake it. Hmm. So, yes, sometimes you cannot be so frank and open. I hate your guts. I don't like you. I don't like your attitude. We will never communicate. Right. But you have to compromise. You have to always see the good things. لا يفرق مؤمن المؤمنة, the Prophet said in the hadith. No. So you always look at the positive side. Right. And أخي, always look at yourself in the mirror hmm. and see, am I getting the same reflection Mm -hmm. that my wife is seeing, or worse or better. I personally believe that whatever my wife is doing to me is far, far greater than what I'm doing for her. So no matter what shortcomings she has, I always look at the bright side. This is how you live a happy life. But to expose yourself and everyone around the house and your friends no, and right. relatives know everything about your life story and they can hear and relate, this is un-Islamic at all. It's unwise, Yanni, we can say that. It's not wise or not wise, it's un-Islamic, un because mm. sometimes you have to vent, they say. But is venting here Islamic or is it backbiting, exposing your life and your family? And would you like her to go and talk about you in a negative way as well? Mm -hmm. So it's un-Islamic and this is why we have to go always back to the Muslim ideal house. MashaAllah. Jazakumullah khair. We ran out of time. MashaAllah. Excellent points. We're going to see you, brothers and sisters, on the next episode. This is your brother, Gabriel Romani. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.